ஓகே ஸோ ட்யூரிங் நெக்ஸ்ட் தேர்ட்டி டு ஃபோர்ட்டி மினிட்ஸ் வாட் ஐம் கோயிங் டு டூ கோயிங் டு டேக் யூ த்ரூ திஸ் கான்செப்ட் ஆஃப் த இன்டிகிரேட்டட் சப்ளை செயின் ஃபார் ஏபிஐஸ் ஸோ வாட் ஐம் கோயிங் டு டூ கிவ் யூ ஸ்டார்ட் டு த டே Uh, by explaining this concept and if uh, it, it is a new uh, thing for you uh, it might be helpful to understand uh, what we are describing here but if it is a familiar uh, topic for you uh, it might be a recap uh, for this so why uh, i want to give a good start because uh, the start uh, uh, depends on how you end uh, any event so that's why i took this picture So if you are a, a supercross fan you might know these guys but my uh, hero in this uh, picture is Eli Tomac who won the uh, championship this day this year so let's get into business uh, so the, um, uh, the 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 uh, the topic is about the products and how uh, the supply chain connect with the api so i thought of um, start with uh, explaining what is the product you might be familiar but uh, it's good to uh, have a small recap so the the concept uh, there are many meanings to a product but uh, the uh, bullet number 2 is relevant for this topic uh, it's basically uh, something that we build as a service or thing that people can use and sold as a commodity so that's what we uh, experience in a product and if you look at uh, the evolution of the product Uh, if you look at the evolution of the product i took this example from the uh, desktop publishing like how um, uh, the uh, it started as a typewriter and then the typewriter went through an evolution then we started uh, using computers to uh, draft these uh, type of documents then uh, the wordpress was a really um, a popular technology during 80s and then we started using various software including uh, microsoft word now today we are using google uh, like the uh, uh, google documents and then uh, office 360 as a pure uh, cloud solution then the uh, i found another interesting picture about uh, evolution of the products so if you look at uh, how this evolution happened uh it it uh, created some complexity but uh, why uh, it it uh, created the complexity because of the uh, functionality that uh, it has to provide uh, to meet the demand uh, the requirements from the users got complicated with that uh, the people who uh, produce these pr- products are required to uh, bring more and more features as well as uh, how they build the product how they distribute the product how they market the product all these things went to Uh, went through this uh, uh, specific evolution then the second uh, part is about the um, the uh, uh, supply chain um, uh, so the, if you look at the supply chain concept uh, uh, the supply chain went through uh, evolution as well uh, so uh, there are two sets of um, uh supply chains i have highlighted here the typical uh, physical uh, industry supply chain it start with sourcing and then it goes to manufacturing and then once you build a product using uh, the manufacturing it goes into a distribution stage and uh, you use different type of sales channels and it goes to the uh, consumer and consumer start consumption but the modern digital supply chain is different Uh, so uh, to understand the market people do a lot of discovery by uh, looking at different data sets and existing services and uh, build the product requirements then it move into the development and uh, the the solution or a product build uh, during the development stage and then the developed products or solutions goes into a deployment stage and uh, the user start uh, discovering uh, what's available and they come and consume the uh, uh, this experience by registering or subscribing to the product that is how the uh, digital supply chain works i took two uh, uh, codes uh, so in uh, 2011 uh, mark anderson who's the co-founder of netscape he uh, predicted something and he said software is eating the world this has already happened uh, if you look at the uh, evolution of the uh, supply chain and how a product or a service uh, looks like and then i took another quote um, the uh, uh, the ceo of microsoft he said every company is a software company because if you look at the um, value or the competitive advantage 
an organization uh, got today is depend on the uh, software that they provide. So that's why people uh, not buying software anymore. It's not a popular trend. People build software by utilizing uh, the existing middleware or uh, uh, platforms that uh, enable people to build different type of products. So that is what happening today. Because uh, uh, if I reiterate it, uh, the uh, the the uh, competitive advantage an organization got today uh, comes from the software that they build. So the new product experience. I took two examples here. Uh, the typical um, the car buying experience is you go to a dealer and then you had to negotiate with the dealer and then uh, you might have to go to multiple dealers and then find uh, the best vehicle for you uh, by bargaining a lot. But today it's a complete different experience uh, how you buy a certain type of vehicles. So I took Tesla's example. If you want to buy a Tesla, you just need the credit card in your hand and you just go uh, pick the model that you required, configure it uh, by uh, navigating through a couple of pages and then uh, you pay your advance and uh, you place the order. Then after that, even you don't need to visit the dealership a person from uh, the uh, organization will bring the vehicle to you and it is full loaded with the insurance and then the registration with DMV. So it's a smooth experience. So that uh, particular experience doesn't stop there. Even after that, if you want to do an upgrade, like some of the features are not, um, uh, not, like not listed as a default feature. If you want to do an upgrade, again, you log into your account and uh, you pay for that particular feature and it will uh, installed in your vehicle. Again, any update like a hard update, like a, a performance related thing or a soft update like an entertainment feature will automatically come as a service pack or a regular update and install in your vehicle. So that is the uh, modern way of you consume some of these products. Then the second example is um, most of the products uh, uh, deploy or uh, distribute as an app and the usual experience, we go to App Store, uh, if the uh, app is free, we download it. If not, then we pay and then uh, download it to the device and start using it. And it can be a one-time payment or it can be a subscription based on the uh, model that we uh, do the payment. So that is the modern uh, product experience. So with this, if you look at the architecture behind uh, these product and services, um, API is taking a huge part. So I took two examples. Uh, so the first example is traditional architecture a pattern that we use to build systems, a layered or a segmented architecture. And if you look at uh, this architecture diagram uh, on your left-hand side, all these layers connected through APIs. And I uh, list these, uh, I, I categorize these APIs as utility domain and edge APIs. Utility APIs are basically uh, exposing the APIs from your uh, different type of uh, system of record layers or data access and virtualization layers. And then the domain APIs are more composite services that will connect different type of uh, services or functionality and provide as a uh, API and edge APIs are uh, in the uh, in between the end user applications and uh, your API management layer that act as a managed API. So that is how APIs link in a uh, centralized uh, layered or a segmented architecture. And uh, the modern architecture patterns move from this centralized nature into a decentralized nature, but usage of the APIs um, uh, is not uh, uh, like uh, not similar to the uh, layered architecture, but it's more uh, uh, change into a way that it can use in a decentralized uh, manner. So if you look at each and every component running in the decentralized architecture, expose the capabilities as an API. Again, we can um, categorize those APIs as a utility domain edge based on the ca capability provided by this particular component. So um, what I want to highlight is uh, both architecture patterns uh, uh, are heavily utilizing the APIs and API uh, is the glue 
of uh, connecting these capabilities and provide something valuable uh, for an application developer to build applications. So if you want to um, uh, uh, get in detail about these two architecture patterns, um, uh, you can see a URL. Uh, so there are two architecture papers that uh, we have published. Uh, one called the uh, layered architecture and segmented architecture that describe about the centralized uh, approach. And then there's another architecture pattern called cell-based architecture that uh, is talking about a decentralized cloud native microservices friendly uh, architecture pattern. So these two documents, two specifications are released under uh, Creative Commons. So feel free to send a, uh, create a Jira, sorry, create an issue and um, uh, give your feedback. Or if you feel you can contribute and give some, uh, uh, you can make some improvements to the document, send a pull request. And if you like the content, give a git star uh, so uh, you can access these two documents. And I'm in the process of uh, uh, creating another architecture paper in this series about uh, decentralized integration and API architecture that will be available um, uh, before the uh, end of this year. So then the, uh, the evolution of APIs. So this is uh, my version of the evolution of the APIs because I uh, was involved uh, in uh, these, uh, these stages that I have described in this diagram. Uh, so the, uh, for me, APIs uh, go way back when we started uh, creating monolithic uh, apps. Uh, they are a pure technical APIs that we used when we were building these applications that is um, heavily connected with the hardware layer. Then uh, it moved to the second level. It's called the early integration level that we use different type of uh, uh, technologies like uh, EDI technologies, file sharing, socket, uh, sockets, message queues, and data to data integration during the early integration. So at that point, there are different uh, APIs like file related APIs and then uh, JDBC or DBC type of uh, APIs were heavily used to do the integration. Then the, uh, the APIs move to a more semi-technical uh, um, uh, nature. Uh, by uh, using different uh, distributed uh, technologies like OLE, OLE2, COM, COM+, COBA, RMI. And at the same time, uh, there was a, a huge architecture uh, evolution happened as well. Uh, the architecture moved from the uh, single tier to two tier into a three tier architecture and three tier architectures heavily uh, consume these type, of, uh, these type of technologies and started uh, communicating using a message oriented approach using these technologies. Then the service oriented architecture came and some of the uh, consumer patterns as well as communication patterns changed. Uh, so the, uh, the concept like enterprise service buses and then standard like SOAP, BPEL, uh, business activity monitoring came and all these technologies used uh, things like uh, uh, the uh, web services standards and XML heavily and started communicating. And those days, those APIs um, uh, used uh, to expose using uh, web services. Then the managed API, especially I think around 2011, 2012, the managed API concept came into the picture to simplify uh, and then uh, dilute the uh, technical complexity of the uh, APIs we had before and provide a simple, uh, self-readable uh, um, and easily managed uh, application developer friendly version of uh, the same capabilities. So we use REST, HTTP, AMQP, MQTT uh, type of uh, protocols to uh, expose these APIs as well as consume uh, these APIs. Then the uh, APIs uh, move to more API products. Uh, currently, we are at that stage. Uh, again, the architecture patterns change to more decentralized and microservices oriented architecture and new technologies added like service measures, gRPC, GraphQL, uh, WebSockets, uh, async APIs like that uh, to address the current uh, needs that we have um, uh, to build applications as well as consume uh, data and services uh, in our systems in different enterprises. So this is the evolution of the APIs. Then uh, with that, uh, uh, the, the, uh, what happened to APIs, uh, even if you look at the evolution, APIs are 
uh, have uh, uh, considered as products that uh, organizations can sell, uh, package, and deliver, as well as application developers can consume uh, without accessing a single API. So it's a package thing that you provide uh, APIs as a product. So then the, uh, that's why we claim APIs are the products of the 21st century, because uh, uh, not like you just deliver one product, if you expose the APIs, um, your application developers uh, can develop many applications, as well as if you expose the APIs to external parties like your partner network, as well as uh, properly monetize the API that uh, the party developer come and uh, consume, uh, they can build many applications. So your services, your products, your capabilities will go into many uh, consumer audiences by using these uh, different applications. So you are kind of exposing your capabilities to a wider audience using APIs. So then the, uh, the, these products, we can uh, find different type of uh, business models. Uh, these APIs expose. So I use a couple of uh, examples from uh, known uh, organizations who is utilizing APIs. Uh, so the, the first category is direct uh, monetized uh, APIs that uh, these organizations sell the APIs that the third parties come and consume, uh, which is in the first bucket. And then the second category in direct monetization, especially like uh, uh, the APIs provide for uh, the partner networks and partner networks build applications and expose uh, behalf of the primary uh, API provider. And then the uh, third model is how you combine physical and digital, especially um, examples like uh, the uh, vehicle uh, providers. Uh, they connect the factories uh, into uh, central data centers, as well as the connected car type of concepts connects uh, the physical devices with uh, digital um, uh, layers. Uh, so those are other uh, type of uh, use, use cases that we can find uh, when it comes to this API product concept. Then the, uh, the larger portion of organizations using uh, the API products as a digital back backbone. Uh, so basically, uh, create a platform uh, for internal users as well as external users to come and build digital products. So the capabilities provide as an API, and then it provides the app development platform. Uh, so the application users can easily uh, leverage the capabilities and build the, uh, build the application. So the advantage of uh, this type of an approach, the application developers, they don't have to worry about the complexity of the data, or they don't have to worry about how uh, the integration should happen within the organization. They will just come subscribe and start working on the application. So they have to just worry about how the end users are using these applications and optimize the capabilities fit into the end user expectation. So that will save a lot of time uh, as well as uh, the organizations can quickly uh, expose a different type of applications and services because you have all the capabilities available as a clean controlled API uh, for the application developers to consume and build these capabilities. Then the products uh, exist uh, in an uh, rely on an ecosystem because uh, uh, a single organization can't uh, provide all the capabilities and the consumer, um, consumer expectations are so complicated. Uh, so uh, the products required to connect with a different uh, uh, type of uh, other entities, that's where the ecosystem creates. So this is valid for the physical supply chain we discussed earlier, as well as this is valid for the digital supply chain we discussed earlier as well. To, to simplify this thing, I took this example. This is a typical Sunday in uh, the uh, Mountain View. 
Castro Street. Uh, this is before the pandemic hit the uh, hit on the ground. Uh, so basically, there's a farmers market happening. A different type of uh, produce uh, providers, like uh, people who sell uh, uh, goods coming there, and then people who consuming goods coming there, and they um, uh, do this transaction. And there are musicians uh, hanging around to entertain people. And there's an art uh, gallery happening in the background. There's wine tasting. So depend on the consumer needs. Um, uh, many uh, pr producers are there, and then providing. Uh, they are uh, different uh, type of expectations. So that uh, enable people to hang around in the marketplace and spend their day. So uh, before pandemic kids, actually, I used to spend uh, most of my Sundays with the family here, but I didn't visit after uh, February. I heard they have started the um, uh, farmer's market, but I didn't uh, visit it yet. So the concept here uh, to uh, have a successful supply chain uh, we need to have a marketplace. So sometimes when I talk to uh, some of the WSO2 customers, they question, I have an API portal, uh, isn't it a marketplace? So the answer is uh, yes and no, uh, because um, API portal provides some capabilities of a marketplace, but not exactly what we are looking at. So if you look at the difference between a portal and a marketplace, portal is a single-sided. You have a provider and you have multiple consumers a single provider provide apis and uh, the uh, different type of consumers will come and consume the apis the difference of the api marketplace there are multiple providers that will uh, provide apis and uh, based on the need uh, people can come and consume those api in a single uh, portal that's where the marketplace concept come into the picture so with the uh, marketplace concept, uh, we identified few patterns. Uh, the first pattern is uh, internal federated marketplace. Most of the organizations, they have different business units. So uh, different business units uh, expose their APIs um, into a single federated marketplace. And these APIs are uh, consumed by internal application developers. So the application developers, they don't have to go into different uh, business units to uh, consume this uh, API. So if you look at the API portal concept, then there will be multiple uh, API portals that they have to go and visit and subscribe. But in this case, uh, the uh, they will go to a single place. As well as uh, there's an advantage with the API product concepts, uh, then you have to subscribe for few API products, not into individual APIs. Uh, so it will make the application developers life uh, easier as well, uh, because there's no uh, complexity that you will go and subscribe to few products based on the application that you Develop. So this is a very common pattern that we see uh, in uh, the API uh, usage uh, in the market. Then the second concept is uh, partner marketplaces. So basically, the, uh, the primary API provider create a public marketplace and then invite their partners to contribute as well. So the partner and the provider, primary provider uh, APIs will be published in a common uh, marketplace and consumers can utilize without going to the primary provider and others like uh, their partners. So that is the partner marketplace pattern. And then the closed group marketplace. Uh, this is a concept especially uh, with uh, uh, different type of uh, businesses who need more con control over the APIs that they provide. So it's a market place only exposed for certain set of uh, uh, people or certain set of application developers. Uh, so, uh, but they enable their partners to publish in the same marketplace. So it's basically, uh, uh, to simplify it, it's like uh, by invitation. So if you have an invitation, only you can participate in this marketplace and consume the APIs. Uh, so the, in some cases, cases like the tokens to access the APIs uh, will not generate uh, from the uh, public portal. Uh, the uh, Those access control will share in a private network like that. You can control uh, this uh, private marketplace uh, using various technologies. Then the fourth pattern is uh, connected with the second pattern. Uh, 
uh, it is uh, the differentiation of that is the revenue generation. It's a shared revenue marketplace. The primary API provider and their partner network will publish the APIs in the uh, marketplace and uh, the revenue will share uh, based on the usage of the APIs and the uh, who provide the API uh, type of a monetization uh, model. Then the aggregator marketplaces, uh, different service providers uh, uh, publish APIs, but uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, they have the capability uh, to aggregate the APIs. Basically, they can override the APIs and then publish them as a useful, meaningful new API in the aggregator marketplace. So these are the five patterns we have identified at the moment, but uh, depending on the usage, we might uh, able to uh, explain more and more patterns. But I think uh, these five is well enough to address the current market outlook. Then the, the, uh, the, uh, this is an example of how uh, it works in the financial industry. Now, if you look at uh, as a consumer, not as a, a technical uh, person or a, a business person who's uh, providing APIs, if you are a, uh, just a consumer of uh, the banking applications or the financial applications, to get a, a meaningful experience, you need the functionality of the banks, you need the functionality of the payment gateways, and then mobile wallets, uh, then uh, uh, different type of fintech technologies. So to get that uh, holistic experience, all these providers have to provide uh, the uh, file capabilities as a set of APIs, and then somebody has to build an application bundling all these things. So that's where these concepts like open banking, uh, PSD2, those type of standards are coming into the play uh, to facilitate these type of uh, capabilities. And this is another example, uh, this uh, the tel telco service provider uh, provide APIs and different type of uh, cell providers consuming these uh, applications as a common gateway in this particular use, use case. And uh, there's a sub uh, pattern in this use case, the primary provider, uh, the one one large uh, cell provider taking the primary provider's APIs and then aggregate it and uh, providing it to their uh, cell providers. Uh, that's how the uh, that aggregated pattern works in the real world. So uh, let's go back to the uh, the API supply chain concept uh, to um, uh, to do a recap. So if you look at the uh, the supply chain uh, in uh, uh, physical products, it contains multiple um, uh, capabilities: the supply chain management, ERPs and financials, uh, logistic management, and product lifecycle management. So we have a bunch of learnings that we can take from the physical supply chain into the API supply chain. So if you map then product and lifecycle management is what we call as the API product management. And the ERPs and financials can uh, link to the API insights and monetization. Basically insights means the analytics and uh, the uh, predictive information that uh, the analytical layer provides. Then supply chain management is related to the integration and enablement of the APIs that will do the core plumbing of these uh, different systems and data that you have and expose them as API. Then the logistics similar to the uh, DevOps and management, how you uh, take an API through the API lifecycle and expose it as a meaningful API and manage the API by versioning and uh, uh, run through the lifecycle of that particular API. Then the, the, uh, the supply chain of the API contains uh, some capabilities as well based on the previous slide, API integration, uh, insights and monetization, DevOps management and product management. So those are the main categories that we have identified in the, uh, the API lifecycle. Then the, uh, the, if you look at in detail, each of these category contains multiple capabilities. So uh, there, there was a bus uh, sometime back, API management is dead. Uh, so I don't believe because if you have, if you are running an API, uh, if, you are a, if you are an enterprise who's providing API, you need API management. Then how you manage the APIs has changed, like whether it's a human or a manual interaction 
or it's automated thing. So what has happened is uh, the API management has moved to a more programmable automated thing linked to the uh, the CI/CD or pipeline driven. But uh, you need the entire API management capabilities contain this type of features. So when you are choosing an API uh, product or API vendor, uh, you need to consider all these uh, capabilities, not just a gateway, because gateway can't provide a complete uh, lifecycle of the API. So the, the you might get uh, confused uh, sometime because uh, you might think this is about how you uh, move uh, physical supply chain into a digital digital sub supply chain, uh, but this is not that. It's about like how you build new business models around APIs using new digital concepts. So that is what we are envisioning here. And uh, we have a, a vision about the market. This is a prediction that we have done. Done. It's uh, called the quantum uh, duality. This is not about physics. Uh, it is kind of a metaphor that we took. Uh, so what we believe there's an equal um, equality between the business side of the API as well as uh, the technical side of the API. Because sometimes a lot of people either take one side, some completely looking at the business side and not ended up with the proper technical implementation. Some only focus on the technology side. With that, it's resulting uh, less business uh, uh, features into your API that will be a key uh, 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 key um, uh, uh, blocker to have a successful API program. So these are like the federation and business models that uh, we have identified. And then uh, the people are moving to the cloud these days. And then we see like more polygot and heterogeneous patterns with uh, many new technologies like micro macro services type of stuff and different uh, technology advance advancements that we see. And then the development has modernized as well that we see micro gateways, edge gateways, and more CI, CD driven and unified API marketplace, so and so forth. This is how uh, we are envisioning what will really happen in the uh, API uh, economy and API platforms. And then there's a huge shift to the cloud native. Uh, everybody talking about cloud, even I didn't believe when I was working with this uh, Linux Alexis uh, a decade ago that you can use that type of container technology in production, but it has become a reality. And everybody moving from the virtualized hypervisor-based technologies into more containers and Kubernetes. I think tomorrow there's a talk about how you can utilize APIs in uh, containers and Kubernetes more cloud native fashion and centralized stuff are moving to more decentralized way. And the uh, APIs are everywhere, not only within uh, one organization, then API gateways are moving into more edge gateways and micro gateways in the decentralized pattern and request response is uh, changing into more event driven or asynchronous uh, set of APIs. Uh, like that, there are many changes happening with the cloud native nature and cloud native interest of the API providers as well as API consumers. <laughs> so with that, uh, the, the um, what we think uh, it has to be a more federated model that you can't just rely on one technology or one vendor, especially when it comes to the API gateways. You can have a common control plane and a, a common uh, uh, management plane, but we believe there can be many data planes uh, provided by different type of vendors. So that's where we started this initiative of uh, defining a specification on how you can do a API federation and have proper interoperability in between different type of API technologies. This is a public uh, specification and uh, uh, I'm inviting you to take a look as well as contribute if you can. So these are some highlights I took. Uh, some of these were predictions people did some time back. And the first one is uh, a recent publication that Akamai, uh, they publish around 83% of uh, uh, traffic uh, in the web traffic uh, uh, goes through APIs. And in 2017, uh, this uh, McKenzie, there was a report they uh, predicted there will be more than $1 trillion um, uh, dollars of revenue coming through the APIs. I think it has become a reality today. And again, in 2018, there was a prediction 
25% uh, of the revenue flows through APIs, and it has uh, uh, like significantly uh, increased uh, than this particular number. So then the, the uh, we are coming to the uh, the latter part of the presentation. It's about how to build this concept. Now we discussed what is the integrated API supply chain and uh, how you build it. So I divide it into two stages. One is the strategy and the implementation. The so implementation side, uh, we can help a lot uh, by uh, providing these three products like the API manager, and we have uh, the enterprise integrator and identity server, as well as two vertical solutions, again, built on top of uh, the API uh, concepts, open banking and healthcare. So we are going to discuss about uh, these uh, uh, product capabilities and how they link with the API uh, supply chain concept during today and tomorrow, uh, the internal uh, subject matter experts, as well as our customers who has already built API supply chains in different domains, in different patterns, and uh, in different type of uh, usage patterns as well as implementation patterns will explain how they are utilizing uh, these products and building uh, supply chains. And this is a, a, a overview of the API integration platform. As I explained, it has to be a comprehensive set of features to uh, have the end-to-end uh, supply chain end to end product capabilities. So uh, these are the uh, functional map. And uh, as you notice at the bottom, uh, these things can implement in a, um, any any uh, infrastructure as a service provider or in more kind of a hybrid mode that you can use multiple infrastructure as a provider layers as well. Then the, 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 uh, I divided the implementation into two the strategy and the uh, implementation. So strategy part, even we can help you a lot. So this is the uh, digital, uh, sorry, uh, the strategic consultancy that we provide. Actually, I am heading this uh, initiative. So what we do uh, here basically help you to um, improve uh, your people, process, and technology uh, advancement on top of the culture and the architecture. I believe culture and the architecture is the foundation for these three. And once you improve that, you have a better digital alignment. So you can uh, look at a uh, detailed uh, methodology on top of these uh, three concepts in the URL that I have highlighted. Then in, uh, under that particular consultancy, we have a special uh, package uh, a consultancy for the API strategy that will uh, we will involve with you on the API design side and then the people alignment, then the technology alignment, as well as how you can uh, market your APIs by doing proper evangelism around that. So this is another uh, uh, the uh, service that we provide that you can heavily utilize and engage with us. Um, so uh, so the the uh, so what I want to highlight in this slide. Basically, uh, we are helping uh, uh, to uh, organizes, organizations to become digitally driven, and we are uh, helping as a technology partner in the digital journey. And if you need more information about these concepts, uh, you can uh, fill a contact us form. And if you need more information about the strategy consultancy, this is the URL. And last three bullet points are my personal information. If you need to have a discussion, you can email me or you can connect with me through LinkedIn or you can follow me on uh, Twitter. And we are happy to help uh, with your API strategy. And uh, I'm sure you are in some kind of a stage of this journey of building an API supply chain. And uh, we are happy to help, as well as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, during today and tomorrow, you will learn a lot on how different technologies, how different type of business capabilities can map into this concept. Um, that's, uh, I have a lineup for today.